welcome to the EKG guy if this is your first time so glad you are joining us today so I wanted to go over this question here because they had a lot of questions coming in from it so hopefully we can address some of them here in this video so here was a question uh, in which we had a 32 year old male presenting with palpitations feeling anxious appearing as such and we have some of his EKG here okay you have the inferior leads uh, 2 3 and AVF and a few of the precordial leads v1 and v5 okay should be enough to differentiate between uh, these rhythms here so the four rhythms listed are a atrial fibrillation b supraventricular tachycardia with sinus beats c accelerated junctional rhythm with sinus beats and d ventricular tachycardia okay so we're going to look at those uh, if you want you can pause the video and try it yourself in the meantime I just want to thank uh, everyone we hit over 1 million likes and followers uh, recently so thank you so much for your support uh, really so grateful for all uh, your support and uh, the thousands of providers that uh, continue to use our our platform and our courses across the world so thank you so much all right so back to this question here our 32 year old gentleman okay so let's look at this you know atrial fibrillation so you know the first thing we tend to look at is the regularity well you can clearly see here that this is an irregular rhythm okay notice that the uh, R to R interval at some of these uh, initial components okay are much longer than some of these here okay uh, so you know this could be atrial fibrillation but what rules it out you know certainly these uh, P waves that are preceding these complexes okay so in fact if you look here notice that uh, these are in fact sinus P waves so our inferior leads have these P waves okay this one is uh, difficult to see there and we'll see why that's the case but you can see that here in three okay as well as in lead two you have these upright and like biphasic positive negative P waves in lead one as well as in v5 okay so there is some component of sinus rhythm here but uh, there may be a little more than that okay so there are some sinus beats and so i would not code this as atrial fibrillation so we can cross a out right off the bat okay now ventricular tachycardia another one on very unlikely this is where we typically have a regular rhythm originating from the ventricular some maybe ectopic focus at a really fast rate so usually above 100 beats per minute in our adults varying by age uh, norms that is so uh, unlikely ventricular tachycardia these are more narrow qrs complexes the p waves preceding uh, those beginning uh, QRS complexes here and even those that are difficult to see those are unlikely VT given the narrowness uh, of them okay so again there can be some irregularity to ventricular tachycardia but this is uh, it's generally a regular rhythm and unlikely uh, the answer here okay so it leaves us to B and C superventricular tachycardia with sinus beats or an accelerated junctional rhythm with sinus beats okay so both of them have that sinus beats component which we realized here the part that we have to realize or look at is is this SVT or is this a, an accelerated junctional rhythm okay so superventricular tachycardia essentially any um, you know tachycardia or fast rhythm originating from above the ventricles okay um and there's a few different things we can look at here and then the accelerated junctional rhythm so a rhythm originating from the av junctional region um typically at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute okay but uh let's take a look at what we have here so we have sinus beats that are occurring okay and then all of a sudden we have a beat here okay followed by all these beats all right so in this case what you have to realize is that this beat here is coming early okay do you notice that here's your intervals and then all of a sudden this beats coming early okay and so we have to ask ourselves what is that beat that's coming early um, is it a premature junctional complex uh, is it coming from the atria where is it coming from well you know if you look closely you can see actually that there is likely a p wave hidden in here okay and why do i say that well look at the t waves that precede the complex so here are these t waves okay and then notice these t waves that come after they're different in morphology okay so notice the 
morphology difference between them, and that's likely because a P wave is headed, hidden in between there. So that's one clue to look. And so that's likely a premature atrial complex, okay, uh, that is then setting off something. Okay, so when we think of a PAC or a premature atrial complex a beat coming from there, it's one that's often going to set off an SVT. Okay, and same thing when you look at maybe a uh, ventricular tachycardia, it tends to be more of a PVC that sets it off. Okay, premature ventricular complex. So here this is a PAC. Okay, and what it's setting off is a narrow, okay, these are narrow complexes. They're occurring at a faster rate, okay? Uh, so certainly above 100 beats per minute uh, and likely coming from above the ventricles, okay? If you look at that second beat after, I'll just erase this here. So notice that you have your three sinus beats, you have this PAC, and then this is kind of setting off. You can see a P wave popping up there, okay? In this case here and then it just kind of continues out, all right? Uh, so th the one take home point here is that, you know, it's certainly not a junctional rhythm, all right? You know, the spacing between this P wave and this complex is too far for it to originate from uh, that junctional node um, and, you know, retrograde back, okay? And there's unlikely a P wave sitting within these complexes. The QRS complexes tend to all look the same, um, both in the sinus rhythm. So notice here's our sinus rhythm. And these QRS complexes tend to look very similar throughout, okay? Um, maybe you have some notching and maybe this could be a mix of uh, two different, maybe a junction will be in there. But if we had to code this, you know, the best choice here, okay, is likely sinus beats and then you have a supraventricular tachycardia, okay, so um, hopefully that makes sense. I would not use the accelerated junctional rhythm clearly because there are those clear P waves preceding that and that PAC that's setting it off and then also the clinical context, this 32-year-old gentleman actually had a history of SVT um, that was actually broke by some uh, vagal maneuvers at home, previous history or use of adenosine to break them as such. So uh, this is an anxious young gentleman with palpitations and likely showing sinus beats that go into an SVT, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Maybe a little trickier question, but uh, one that I'm sure uh, you can make sense of. Okay. Uh, so just to close off again, if you are interested in our course, you know, we launched our new course with, you know, hundreds of videos. We'll be bringing out CME courses uh, that will be uh, rolling out soon. You can find our uh, courses and all available on Mayo Clinic's uh, cardiology education website as well. Um, again, thank you for helping us reach 1 million uh, users across the world. It's uh, really grateful for your support and hopefully we continue to provide you high uh, quality educational material so you can really master the EKG. Thank you so much for your support and have a great day.